Huxley Prescott reporting live on this, the first day of spring. Get up, get out, turn off your TV, and oh, no, no, don't do that. Not while I'm on. <laughs> Bring it with you. Take your TV out for a glorious afternoon of non-stop sunshine. Don't worry, not even a little rain can dampen this beautiful day. Or lightning. Or even thunder. Mudslide! Okay, that might just do it. Mudslide at the park. Kate, are you close? Already on it. Ah! <laughs> no, 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 no. No need to panic, we got this. It's still not safe out there. Get in and wait for backup. Hey, hey, I was making rescues before you set foot on this planet. I think I can handle a little mud. How about a lot of mud? A routine patrol with four bats and stasis. He's like a poke in the strangest of places. Earth was their home now, and in addition, Optimus Prime gave them this mission. Learn from the human, serve and protect. Live in their world, earn their respect. Family of heroes will be your allies. The players who make the world fast in the sky. Rescue bots, go to the rescue. Give it to me. A hero is in need. Rescue bots, go to the rescue. Rescue bots. Stand back, guys. Power up and energize. Hang on tight, folks. Mud. Yuck. Will they be touching me? Once again, the Burnses and the rescue bot save not only the day, but this reporter's giblets from a deadly mudslide. And for their ongoing and outstanding work in protecting Griffin Rock, the Burns family will be honored Saturday with commendations from the State Emergency Response Bureau, with the award ceremony being photographed for this month's Emergency Response Illustrated, the Life Jacket Edition. Ooh, this could be the start of my modeling career. Yeah. Can I go to the mainland for the ceremony too, Dad? Of course, son. You're part of the team. The bots won't be forgotten either, as Mayor Lusky has hereby declared Saturday the start of Bot Appreciation Week. I hereby declare Saturday the start of Bot Appreciation Week. <sighs> nice planning. That's the same day as my photo shoot. We'll have bot races, pin the tail on the bot, a bot dog eating contest. <laughs> And at noon, I will personally present the bots and the Burnses with this, the key to the city. I was unaware that the city had a lock, but I gladly accept the responsibility of opening and closing our town each day. It's not a real key, Chase. It's a symbol, a token of the town's thanks. Best of all, everyone who attends will receive a miniature rescue bot souvenir, generously donated by me at great personal expense. <laughs> Re-elect Mayor Lusky! Re-elect Mayor Lusky! <laughs> oh. Does my souvenir make my hips look big? You guys were all scanned by Doc Green's 3D printer, remember? So those are exact copies. So you're saying my hips are big? It's nice that the mayor wants to honor us. <sighs> What's the point? They still think we're mindless machines. They might as well be thanking their vacuum cleaners. Uh, the difference is, Mr. Ungrateful Head, that if you programmed it, a vacuum cleaner would actually say, you're welcome. <laughs> Ungrateful Head, ah, that's good. Well, whose idea was it to schedule both ceremonies on the same day? What if we run into trouble here while you guys are on the mainland? What's the matter, big guy? You afraid you can't handle things on your own? Hey, Hotshot, we were making rescues way before we set foot on your planet. I think we can handle an oversized fake key. Heatwave will only be gone a couple of hours. We'll take the Darby Ava and be back by noon. Mm -hmm. Which do you guys think is my best side for the magazine cover? Your backside! Yeah. <sighs>
Daddy? What are you still doing up? Burning the midnight fossil fuel. The mayor ordered another ten crates of souvenirs for tomorrow. <laughs> Why make them one at a time? Doesn't the 3D printer have an automatic setting? Yes, but I want to keep an eye on the process. I'm concerned about the wear and tear on the machine. <laughs> I'm concerned about the wear and tear on you. Let's both get some sleep. But with a little creative programming, we can make them do all kinds of useful tricks. <laughs> Nobody moves until Chief is back to give orders. That's how vacuum cleaners work, remember? And with that stirring rendition of the Griffin Rock Anthem, we mark the opening day of Bot Appreciation Week! And don't forget to pick up your free miniature bot replicas from the re-elect Mayalusky booth. <laughs> They're free? Did I mention they're free? Look what they're doing to me! Oh, the horror! The horror! Humans are certainly creative. <laughs> there is nothing creative about tiny, reckless driving. Sorry this batch is late, Mr. Mayor. My 3D printer was behaving quite strangely. Emergency Response Team of the Month. That's something to be proud of, kids. We'll have to hang this in the firehouse to show the bots. Those folks from the state sure put on a great ceremony for us. Well, a plaque's okay. But that all-you-can-eat shrimp buffet made the whole trip worthwhile. It's all you can eat while you're there, Cade. You're not supposed to bring half of it home with you. 10.45. We should make it back in plenty of time for the key presentation. What happened to the engine? Looks like the propeller's all tangled up in kelp. This should be a snap. Uh, oops. Nice one. Boulder could just reach down and rip out the kelp with one hand. Well, clearing it ourselves is gonna take a little longer. Now, who do we know who has a wetsuit on board? Hurry up, sis. I won't miss the bot dog eating contest. Um, actually, we have bigger problems. There's a swarm of poisonous jellyfish heading straight for Danny. Danny, get up here now! She can't hear us. I'm going in. You'll be stung even worse without a wetsuit. I sure wish the bots were here. It's up to us. We have to get her attention somehow. The air horn. Thanks, guys. Re-elect Mayor 
free souvenir. Yes, uh, re-elect me. <laughs> Here you go, it's free. <laughs> there you are. Oh, one side, press coming through. I want a mini boulder uh, for my nephew, of course. <laughs> Now the fun begins, bro. Like I said, a little reprogramming gets you all kinds of useful tricks. Get my upcoming presentation of the key to the city to the box and the Burnses. Should be here any minute. I've never seen so many jellyfish. How do we get rid of them? We could really use the bot's help right now. I've been trying to call them, but there's no answer. The comm must be out of range. Yeah, I radioed a distress call, but the closest ship is miles away. We'll just have to wait it out and hope the jellies move on. <sighs> Looks like Heat Wave was right to worry. We're not going to be back on time. Good thing somebody thought to bring food for the trip. Shrimp? Uh, well, well, we can't wait for the Burnses any, any longer. longer. The, the show, show must go on. on. So, so without further ado, it, it is my honor and privilege as your incumbent and up for re-election mayor to present to our very own rescue bot this key to our fair city of Griffin Row. Where did it go? Someone stole my purse! My wallet's gone! The cash box, it's empty! Breaking news, Bot Appreciation Week has been stricken with an outbreak of mysterious thefts. My camera! Yeah. Rescue Bots, do you understand me? After that key thief, that is, find him! No, no, secure the perimeter. Search everyone! Except me. Round up the usual suspects! Where is Chief Burns? Wish he'd make up his mind. Well, I just made up mine. No more hiding. It's time for us to... Heatwave, we cannot risk revealing our true natures. It would only cause more panic. Chase is right. No one's in danger. I say we sit tight. <sighs> <sighs> If Danny were here, we'd already be kicking Tail Rotor. Well, she would. I'd be taking names. <gasps> Look! It's the souvenirs! She's right! Doc, what have you done to them? Me? Nothing! I don't understand. They must have been tampered with. Reprogrammed to steal. But who? I believe our work here is done. <laughs> I vow to hunt down whoever is responsible for these fiendish figurines! Re-elect Mayor Lusky! Re-elect Mayor Lusky! Re 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 On the other hand, we need to stay calm and act rationally. Ah! Yeesh. Destroy them! Destroy them all! Thanks, Heat Wave. Now, robots, uh, keep obeying my order to protect everyone. Great thinking. Thanks, Frankie. Complying. Here, you be Cade. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's me being Cade. It seems like there are even more of them now. Graham, what do jellyfish eat? Well, small aquatic organisms, primarily. Plankton, mollusks. Shrimp? That's what's been drawing them to the boat. Hey, I am not finished with those. Sorry, son, but you are now. Good call, Cody. With no food, these jellyfish should start dispersing right away. 
Let's see if I can speed things along. We have the bait. All we need is a hook. A solid cast, just like my papa taught me. <sighs> nice shot, Dad. I'll untangle that kelp. Back in a jiff. And we'll still be able to catch some of Bot Day. At least the tail end. <laughs> They'll be cleaning up that mess for hours. Which means it's time for phase two. Blaze contained. But perpetrator still active. And extremely messy. Will you hold still? Revolution. Apparently, someone reprogrammed my 3D printer. And turned the souvenirs into mini kleptobots. Look, where are those bots going in such a big hurry? How about we follow them and find out? About time you showed up. We really needed you guys today, especially after Cade's shrimpathon. Shrimp a what? It's not important. Just let's let's move. Good to have you back, partner. Oh, I miss you too. Not the flying so much, but you, yes. Chase, is that catch up? A lengthy story. Bot Appreciation Week, bro. I sure appreciate these bots. <laughs> well, I'll be. Now the question is, who are these little outlaws working for? I should have guessed. Evan and Miles. Let's move in, team. Dude, I'm trying to counter take. Attention, perpetrators. Exit the vehicle peacefully with your hands in the air. We're not going down without a fight. Attack mode. Incoming at three o'clock. Way to knock off those knockoffs. Thanks for the heads up. Steady, steady, now! You have the right to remain silent. Frankly, we would prefer it. Time to power down those half-pint perps. And with a little reprogramming from Doc, maybe we can reform them. This is Huxley Prescott resuming live coverage of Bot Appreciation Week with a just returned hovercam. Thank 
thanks to the efforts of the Burns family and the rescue box, I can finally present them all with the key to the city. One thing I don't understand, Chief, how are the bots able to do so much without you Burnses to command them? Well, I'm certain it was your clear-headed leadership, Mr. Mayor. Ah, yes, <laughs> of course. And I plan to continue those leadership skills in my next term. Thank you, Mayor Lusky. Today was a powerful reminder that a team performs best when all of its members work together. And I, for one, appreciate every single one of them, bot and burns alike. And what better way to show our thanks and remind the voters of Griffin Rock to re-elect yours truly than with this lavish all-you-can-eat shrimp buffet. I love this job. Got my vote. Ooh, I know breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but does it have to come so early? But if it came later, it would be lunch. Graham, it's not rocket science. Actually, cooking is science. It deals with chemistry, physics. Changing the channel. Yeah, check out the Burnt Toast Network. I like it well done. Oops. <laughs> Eight o'clock, Cody. Wouldn't be a bad idea to leave for school a little early. It'll be hectic this morning with the new clock tower dedication. Sure thing, Dad. Morning, guys. Hey, Cody. What's that you have? A pocket watch. It was in the lost and found for a while, so Deputy Barney let me have it. But what if the actual owner comes looking for his or her misplaced bobble? Then I'll give it back. It looks so old. Definitely low tech. That's what I like about it. It reminds me of the past, when things were simpler. Cody's right. Technology is great when it can help, but sometimes it starts controlling us. We're headed down to the dedication, so how about a ride to school, son? Feels like we haven't talked in ages. No thanks, Dad. I want to walk. Hmm. Used to be you'd want to ride with me every morning. You kids grow up too fast. Sometimes I wish I could go back in time and keep you a little forever. Well, most of you. Frankie, wait up! Whoa! Watch where you're... Those two are sure in a hurry. Hi, Cody. Hello, Frankie. Hi, Mr. Harrison. Morning. Heading down to the clock dedication. <laughs> His rotor's bent. Above Mrs. Niederlanders. Let's go, team. He won't hold still. I'll make him come to you. Squirrel came out of nowhere. <laughs> you have to stop chasing those squirrels, Mr. Pettipaws. 
You caused a lot of trouble. Hey, Dad, looks like I might need that ride to school after all. <laughs> you okay? I'm fine, thanks. Morning, class. We'll be taking a field trip today to see the dedication of the clock tower. <laughs> but first, a pop quiz. The new clock is run by a Magno Fusion power core. It'll sync up every time telling device in Griffin Rock. Not this one. All I have to do is wind it. Cody, watch winding is so 19th century. Huh, that squirrel really gets around. Good morning, friends and citizens. As the old saying goes, even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> Is this on? Yeah. But our town's timepiece, now with state-of-the-art technology, continuously tells perfect time down to the millisecond. It's always right. Area closed for clock dedication. Please turn around, citizen. Citizens of Griffin Rock, I'm happy to present to you the newest addition to our already thriving town, the Mayor Lusky Clock Tower. Are you all right, Mrs. Rubio? Reminder for future civic events. A few well-placed detour signs could prevent much trouble. My dedication is ruined. No one was hurt and probably your most memorable speech ever. You're welcome. Are you okay, son? I'm fine, Dad. What? Ooh, I know breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but does it have to come so early? <sighs> Was I dreaming? Graham. It is not rocket science. Actually, cooking is science. It deals with chemistry, physics. Changing the channel. Yeah, check out the Burnt Toast Network. I like it well done. Oops. <laughs> Eight o'clock, Cody. Wouldn't be a bad idea to leave for school a little early. It'll be... Hectic, because of the new clock tower dedication. Huh, you read my mind. Guess you know me pretty well, huh, son? Everything okay? I'm not sure. How can it be 8 o'clock again? Hey, Cody. It's my pocket watch, Boulder. I got it from Deputy Barney. I was just going to ask that. I know. Something weird is happening. I've experienced all this before. In a few seconds, my family will come down and my dad will ask me if I need a ride. Cody, you need a ride to school? No thanks, Dad. I'll walk. You kids grow up so fast. If only, only I, I could, could go back, back in time, time and keep, keep you a little, little forever. forever. Dad, I, I think I just did go back in time. Back in time? What exactly do you mean, Cody? You came from the future? No. Well, sort of. It's just, I've been through all of this before. You mean, like, deja vu? Deja who? <laughs> Deja vu. It's a French term. It means already seen. When you feel like something's happening that you already lived through before, it's called deja vu. Oh, I get it! No, I don't. Oh, like arguing with heat wave. Seems like that happens over and over. Unfortunately, that's real. It's not just a feeling. It's real events. 
Like toast burning, coffee spilling, even Dad telling me he wants to keep me little forever. <laughs> okay. If you've been through all this before, what are tonight's winning lots of bucks numbers? I don't know. It was only this morning, just the last hour or so. Well, next time you time travel, get some useful information, huh, bro? Actual time travel would have required some type of machine or portal. And there's nothing like that in this situation. You believe me, don't you, Dad? I believe you feel like you've been through all this. If you're worried, Cody, I think we should go talk to Doc Green. That's okay. I think it's all over now anyway. All this seems new. Danny's right. It was probably just deja vu. Or maybe even a dream. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. Thanks, Dad. Cody, maybe you didn't really time travel. But just to be on the safe side, is there anything we should know that might help in the next hour? After all, all tools are helpful in keeping the town safe, even unproven psychic phenomena. Thanks for believing me, guys. Well, maybe you should just come with me. Hey, Cody. What's going on? Just a little preventive maintenance. Hang on to him, Chase, until Mr. Harrison flies by. He is flying pretty low. Just like Cody said he would. Yeah, weird. Oh, I guess everything's okay. Stopping Mr. Pettypaw seemed to take care of it. Cody, anything else we should know? Later, at the clock dedication, a toolbox is going to fall, and a fire hydrant is going to blow. We'll make sure they don't. Uh, you want to tell me what's going on? Um, later, after Timmy's books and the pop quiz. Pop quiz? Hey, Timmy, watch out! Don't turn that corner. You're going to... Never mind. Morning, class. We'll be taking a field trip today to see the dedication of the clock tower. Yeah! But first, a pop quiz. How do you know all this stuff? I've already been through this whole morning before. I think I traveled back in time. <gasps> that is so cool. We have to tell my dad. You actually believe me? Hello, we live in Griffin Rock. Let's finish the quiz, then ask Mr. Schulte if we can go see my dad. After all, it is a matter of town safety. Or it could be. Note to self, do not add red algae puree, try green kelp paste instead. Hi, Dad. Hello, you two. I'm testing a new energy drink. Uh, shouldn't you be in school? We have an emergency. Cody's experiencing the same morning all over again. We need to help him figure out what's going on. Fascinating. Tell me everything, Cody. Well, it started at breakfast. Then, 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 then Mrs. Rubio's car ran into the clock tower. And that's when I was sent back to the beginning of the morning. You seem to be experiencing a random distortion in the temporal continuum perhaps caused by a nucleoelectric anomaly. You're traveling back in time. That's what I thought, but how? And why only me? Could it have something to do with the clock tower being hit? It does run on magnofusion technology. Precisely what I was thinking. But Cody's right. We have to figure out why this time jump is happening only to him and not to the rest of us. Because I don't remember having this conversation before. Uh, or uh, did I? Hmm. Um, not with me. Well, we'd better head down to the clock tower dedication and warn the rescue team. If we can prevent the car from hitting the tower and damaging the magnofusion battery, Cody should be safe. Fire hydrant is secure. Oh, thanks. Forgot about that. Just keeping you safe, citizen. Is there anything else we should be aware of, Cody? Keep an eye out for Mrs. Rubio. A detour sign or two may help. Excellent idea. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Schulte. We took care of everything. Well, he's right on time. Wonder where he's going. Good morning, Griffin Rock. 
As the saying goes, even a broken clock... clock is right twice a day. <laughs> but our town's timepiece, now with state-of-the-art technology, continuously tells perfect time. Now, millisecond. I see Mrs. Rubio. She's headed this way. Should be fine, but track her just in case. To our already thriving town, the Mayor Lusky Clock Tower! <laughs> No sign of trouble. She's passing the crowd. Are you unharmed? Please drive carefully and avoid crowds. Don't know how you did it, Code, but you saved the day. Thanks for helping, guys, and for trusting me. Well, looks like you're safe. This time, nothing happened to the clock tower. I know breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but... Does it have, have to, to come, come so, so early? early? <sighs> Round three. Dude, what are you doing? Making sure you don't burn toast. I am insulted by that. I put out fires. I don't start them. Uh, thanks. I was just about to grab that. Don't worry, Dad. I won't be late, I don't need a ride, and yes, I'm growing up fast. Whoa. I was just going to... I know. But listen, we need to see Doc Green right now, with a stop at Mrs. Niederlander's first. I'll explain on the way. Don't add red algae puree. It'll make your energy drink bubble over. Use the green kelp paste instead. But how did you know I was... Same way he knew about Mr. Pettipaws and Mr. Harrison. He's psycho. I think you mean psychic, and he's not. Oh, seems like I've told this story a lot already, but... This morning, I came out for breakfast, and that's when I went back for the second time. So, the solution I suggested uh, before no longer makes sense. It must not be the car hitting the clock that's sending you back, but something else damaging the Magnofusion battery. Cody, do you remember anything else going on with the clock? No, but I couldn't really see everything from where I was. Whatever it is, it always happens precisely at 9 a.m. Doc said the battery casing should be somewhere on the observation deck. Oh, oh nothing to be afraid of, Graham. It's not that high. It's not the height that bothers me. Mainly, it's just ladders. It's totally safe, and a lot more fun than going up the stairs. Wait, there are stairs? <laughs> what is your rescue team doing? They're ruining my dedication! No, Mayor, they're saving your dedication. Just give your speech, and I'm sure everyone will be so mesmerized, they won't even notice my team. Ah! Yes, yes, uh, you're right. <clears throat> Good morning, friends and citizens. As the old saying goes, even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> Just a precaution, Mrs. Rubio. Would you mind parking here until the dedication is over? It's always right. I think I found the battery. That's the cannon pinion. Nuts! No, I'm sure it's the cannon. No! Look! Nuts! That's it, Kate. That's the battery casing. Well, yeah. Good thing I'm here. Not sure where the peanuts came from, but. Cody, just found the battery. Actually, I found it. And everything looks fine. Perimeters are secure. Everything appears to be in order. Thanks, Chase. Maybe the problem is solved. Let's hope so. Why don't you go join your class? I'll explain things to your teacher. Where have you been? You missed a... Pop quiz, I know. Don't worry. I already took it. Twice. <laughs> That little guy sure is persistent. He runs up there oh, every time. The squirrel. 
down to the millisecond. It's always right. Where's Cody going? I don't know. We already told him we handled everything. You! You're the one! Stop! Stop! Get away from there! You're going to hurt yourself! And the clock, and... Cody, are you all right? Where did you go? I'm at the top of the clock tower, Dad, and everything's fine. you at my back. Next time, stay on the safe side of the safety rail, okay? You okay, son? It worked. I'm still here. Mm, the squirrel chewing through the wire made the Magno Fusion battery momentarily surge. That caused the time jolt that kept sending Cody back. No matter how you tried to change things, Cody, the squirrel had the last word. But I still can't figure out why Cody was the only one affected. Me either, but low-tech or not, I'm sticking with my old-fashioned watch. You may have to wind it, but it won't yank you through time. Did you just get that? Yeah, I just started using it... this morning. You don't think. Maybe I should have Daddy take a look at this. Morning, Cody. How are you doing? Happy to be here on this beautiful new day. It is a new day, right? It'd be hard to tell from Cade. He burns toast every morning. And yet your jokes always seem fresh. You know, Dad, I was thinking maybe you could drive me to school today so we can catch up. I'd like that, son. You were right, Cody. I just came from Doc's. This isn't an ordinary pocket watch. It contains the same type of crystal as the one from the time portal in the lab. That's why I was zapped back in time? Yep. The energy disruption in the clock tower battery interacted with this crystal. The watch became a mini time machine. And it took me back to the exact time I wound the watch. This came from Deputy Barney? From the Lost and Found. Dad, look! Well, now we know who lost it. Gone but not forgotten. Dr. Morocco. Citizens of Griffin Rock. Welcome to our Founders' Day celebration! The anniversary of the day Horace Burns established our fair town. Now, since that time, Griffin Rock has seen many other great leaders, uh, including <coughs> yours truly. If this speech lasts any longer, your torch may go out. Don't be nervous, sis. Representing generations of our family, everybody watching, no pressure. I'm not nervous, I'm honored. Well, I'm nervous. Blades, all you have to do is lift me up to light the ceremonial flame. Yeah, there's a good idea. Wave a burning stick in a gusty wind. All fire code requirements for this ceremony have been met, Heatwave. I saw to it personally. I'd still be a lot happier with less open flame. Not only is Danielle Burns an experienced first responder and a descendant of Horus, she also organized Griffin Rock's extremely successful clothing drive for the mainland. And so this year, Danny has been chosen to light this flame. Don't count on it, Mr. Mayor. Huxley Prescott reporting, once again ripping the lid off the scandals and secrets of Griffin Rock. At this very moment, I am holding proof that the Burnses are not the upright family everyone thinks they are. Huxley, what's all this about? It's about a skeleton in the closet, Chief. Your family's closet. There's a skeleton in the closet at the firehouse? I'll explain later. I'm referring, of course, to Horace Burns' wife, Bertha. Or should I say, Bertha the Pirate. Pirate? And not just any pirate, but THE pirate, who in 1652 stole a fortune from ye olde Griffin Rock Guildhall Charity Fund. Oh, 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 
Huxley, what makes you think this Bertha the Pirate was the same Bertha as my great-great-great-grandmother? Good question, Ms. Burns. Yo-ho-ho -ho and a bottle of that! <laughs> Danny Burns begotten by pirates? Hey, well, obviously, I'll just have to light the torch myself. But, Mayor, I'm not... Mr. Mayor, please. Griffin Rock has been betrayed! Mayor, look out! A routine patrol with four bats and stasis. You stay in a poke in the strangest of places. Earth was their home now and in addition. Optimus Prime gave them this mission. Learn from the human, serve and protect. Live in their world, earn their respect. How you handle a crisis? Oh, just like pirates to ruin this day. Don't think for a minute you'll ever light that torch. But you started the fire. Now you're spreading accusations. Oh, if you think I'm leaving the safety of Griffin Rock in the hands of you, Buccaneer Burnses, you've got another thing coming. Mr. Mayor, listen to reason. Chief Burns, you and your entire family are suspended. What? That's ridiculous. Mayor Lusky? Are you kidding? <gasps> and your little bots, too. Mr. Alper, Milo, Mr. Harrison, follow me. We're forming a citizen safety board. I don't understand. How can he be judged for the actions of somebody in the past? I've never understood it either. My teacher, Mrs. Murphy, still yells at me for all the trouble Cade caused in school. And that was years ago. Eh, sorry, Code. But looking back, it was so worth it. For the record, I have witnessed no piratical activity amongst your family, and would swear so in a court of law. Thanks, Chase. I hope it doesn't come to that. Danny Burns, Griffin Rock wants to know if you have any comment on your spiral into disgrace. Nothing fit for TV. Where did you find this painting, and, and who told you those lies? A reporter never reveals his source. Maybe not. But most reporters didn't sing a karaoke disco medley at last year's Lobster Fest. Should I show your audience? Uh, uh, this is Huxley Prescott protecting his sources and signing off. You and your wily pirate ways. All right, then. I learned all of this from your uncle, Woodrow Burns. You'll find him in the library. Uncle Woodrow! Well, hello, family. Shh! Hello, family? Is that all you have to say for yourself? We were all just suspended because of what you told Huxley. What? But why? All I told him was that we had a pirate ancestor. Shh! Let's go somewhere where we can talk. All right, Woodrow. First of all, why would you say that to Huxley before telling us? We didn't even know you were in town. Because I wanted to surprise you all with the good news. Good news? What, our great uncle is Count Dracula? No, I'm talking about what I found while researching the family. The map to Bertha's lost treasure. A treasure map? Noble! So there really was a treasure? I thought all that pirate in the family stuff was just a legend. Unfortunately, Bertha's theft of the Guildhall Charity Fund is well documented by historians. Tisk tisk, a blemish upon the Burns family name. That was a long time ago. What difference does it make? You're right. It just doesn't seem fair. 
It might not even be the same Bertha. This painting doesn't prove anything. This map will definitely help clear things up. Except, it doesn't specify exactly where these islands are. I was hoping maybe you bots could help. Hmm, let me take a look. I'm running it through the database. No matches yet. Wait a minute. Boulder, can you invert the image? Make the dark parts light and vice versa, like a photograph negative. Those aren't islands. It's water, and this is the shoreline. It's the cove by the sea caves, near the Griffin Keys. Bertha was known to frequent those caves. It's as good a place to start as any. A reverse map? She must have been pretty clever. Well, Burns family, time for an adventure. Sorry, Woody. I'm not following you on another wild goose chase. It does seem like a long shot. I think you've been punked by a pirate. I'll go, Uncle Woodrow. If it's okay, Dad. Well, I... don't worry, Charlie. I'll keep an eye on Cody. And I'll keep an eye on Uncle Woodrow. Seriously? Treasure hunting? I want to get to the bottom of this and clear the Burns family name. And my face. Arg! Shear me timbers, matey! I'm on board, too! Our first crisis of the day! Uh, not counting the fire you started, sir? Not counting that. Our holographic traffic lights are on the fritz. But never fear, the Citizen Safety Board is here. And our own Mr. Harrison will direct traffic to keep us safe. Ain't ready, Mr. Harrison? Just watch my hand signals. the gear we need, Uncle Woodrow? Lantern, flares, cupcakes, <laughs> you name it. Cave looks pretty narrow. I'm not sure you'll fit inside, Blades. Oh, darn. I guess I'll have to stay outside. But I'll be thinking of you. Forever. This reminds me of the rock mazes of Ibabunto. I spent hours finding my way out. So what you're trying to say is... Yep, we're lost. Uncle Woodrow. We just took a few wrong turns. But this tunnel looks promising. I think I squashed the cupcakes. Everybody okay? Where are we? Blades? Blades, do you read? No, oh, the walls must be too thick for our signal to get out. We've been gone for a long time. I'm sure he went for help by now. <laughs> I hope Danny and Cody are having as much fun as I am. That's daylight. This must be the way out. I don't think we want out just yet. A skull and crossbones, like the one in the portrait of Bertha. Do you think this could be her lair? Cody, every pirate used this symbol. It doesn't prove anything. Besides, I don't even see any treasure. Shouldn't there be two of these? I mean, you can't have a crossbones with only one bone, right? Maybe Bertha's trying to tell us something. That if she was a pirate, she wasn't very good at it. Okay, just for the sake of argument, if the second bone was here, it would point this way. Whoa! Found something! A lever! Look, 
luck, everybody! No way. Unbelievable! What's inside? What do you know? There's a treasure after all. There's a chest. That's all we know for now. We haven't looked yet. We decided to save the big moment for everybody to share. Well, come on, open it! The suspense is killing me! Part of me hopes it's empty. Just to prove that maybe Bertha wasn't a pirate after all. Oh, no. Whew. So mm, not so. Yeah, knew oh, it. I thought Too so. bad. Anticlimactic. Wait, Uncle Woodrow, look! There's something written on the inside of the chest. Another clue? Only the last key will unlock the hidden treasure. Excellent. But are there instructions on where to find this key? That it's a riddle. Hmm. Maybe a, a musical key? C sharp! The last key. Key is an island? The farthest island of the Griffin Keys! That's where the treasure must be buried. Hmm. Gotta admit, Bertha was one smart lady. Must run in the family. So, intrigued now, Charlie? Care to go on an adventure? Sure, beats sitting around doing nothing. We cannot all participate. It would be a violation of our oath to leave Griffin Rock unprotected. Griffin Rock doesn't want our protection. It's still our responsibility to keep an eye on things. Chase, you mind staying behind to watch the command center? With pleasure, and I will contact you if there is an emergency. Well then, little brother, let's go find some answers. singing sea shanties. Anybody know any? Besides Yo-Ho-Ho, -ho, that one gets pretty old. What's so great about finding rusty old metal anyway? That rusty old metal is worth a fortune. Cade, we're not here to get rich. We're here to learn more about our family history. No, we're here to prove this treasure has nothing to do with our family history. That I, we, are not descended from pirates. Danny, whatever Bertha did or didn't do, it doesn't change who you are. Tell that to the mayor. Cade, maybe you should let Woodrow take the lead. He's had a bit more experience. Dad, I know what I'm doing. Be careful. These trees are perfect nesting places for indigenous insects like that. Digger wasps! Jump in the water! I can help with that. Get away! Get my face! Ah! Good thinking, Woodrow. Yeah. Thanks. I think. <laughs> that was nothing compared to the giant hornets of Wapzilla. They ever tell you about those? Often. Yes, ma'am. We know your son's kite has been stuck in that tree for hours. And the Citizen Safety Board will be there any minute. Or by Tuesday. No, sir. We can't look for your lost pet right now. Perhaps if you set out a saucer of whatever pythons drink? <laughs> oh, this is a disaster. Uh, I should never have suspended the Burnses. But I'm a leader. I can't just flip-flop now, can I? More sand, same palm trees. And no clues. Wait, look, X marks the spot. The palm trees are the clue, the treasure is up there. I hit something. Careful now. Whatever the treasure is, it's centuries old. We wouldn't want to damage this rotted piece of wood. Oh, oh, treasure. oh, oh man. Ow. My timber's just unshivered. Maybe it's another clue? Uh, no, you were right again, Charlie. Another Woodrow Burns wild goose chase. Looks like Bertha was just trying to fool everybody, us included. I'm sorry, Woody. Really. But this can't be all there is. You said it yourself, Dad. Bertha was a smart lady. She wouldn't go to all this trouble. The map, the clues, for nothing. We're judging things by what we found on the surface. 
Just like the mayor judged us. Boulder, keep digging. Sure, Danny. You were right. This timber goes down pretty far. Wait, that's... The mast of a ship. Okay, reshiver me timbers. Arg. Now that's what I call a good hiding spot. How on earth did Bertha bury her entire ship? I'm beginning to think she could do anything she put her mind to. Whoa. Jackpot. You said it. Bertha's logbook. Uh, I was talking about the gold. Forget the gold. Here, Danny, read this. I, Bertha Carnahan. Carnahan? Her maiden name, before she married Horace. Hereby end my pirate career with my richest booty yet, the Guildhall Charity Fund. Oh, so it's true. Keep reading. I wish to start afresh in life as Mrs. Horace Burns, but I cannot return the treasure without revealing my identity. While I would gladly accept my own punishment, I cannot bring shame upon Horace and his family. Thus, I bury this treasure here, hoping that one day my descendants may find it and do what is honorable. What I do, I do for love. She really was a pirate. Exactly, was. But she got a second chance and took it. Now it's up to us to do as she asked. What do we tell the mayor? I have a few ideas. Welcome to Founder's Day Part 2! Forget Founder's Day! What are you doing about that useless citizen safety board? Milo, you're on that board! That's beside the point! We need the Burgess back! Bring back the Burgess! Bring back the Burgess, everybody! Bring, Bring back, back, the back the You down there! Bring, Bring back, back the Burgess! I like the sound of that. Danny Burns! Your pirate clan are not invited to this celebration! You might want to reconsider. <laughs> yeah! Gold doubloons. Enough to fix the damage from yesterday's fire. And any other damage caused by our suspension. Huxley Prescott on the scene with breaking news. Danny Burns, is this Bertha's lost treasure? Bertha's found treasure. And the rest of it will go to charity, as originally intended. I know it's the right thing to do, but that part kind of hurts. And we found her pirate ship. That will go to the museum. Aw, we're giving away that too? I wanted to keep it. None of that changes the fact that your ancestor was a pirate. Ah, but she gave up the pirate life when she fell in love with Horace Burns. The proof is here. But that doesn't even matter. It doesn't? No, because people should be judged for what they do, not their family or their friends or anybody else. And that's true whether they're pirates, police, or even politicians. Well, in that case, welcome back, Burnses! Here, Chief. These are your problems now. Uh, you may want to deal with the python first. Hey, Danny, could you come to school and repeat that speech to Mrs. Murphy? Aw, sure, Cody. And we'll bring Cade. Me? With Mrs. Murphy? She'll give me detention for life! I want to go back to the firehouse. We need to find that closet and get rid of the skeleton. I think we just did, buddy. So, Uncle Woodrow, does the logbook say how Bertha and Horace met? Or how they fell in love? No. Clearly, there's more to this story. Who's up for the library? No thanks. No thanks. I need to clean the toaster. Once a year's my limit. a lot faster than our floating lab, and way cooler. I sure don't mind getting away from fire for a day. One thing about the ocean, it doesn't burn. Sea monster! <laughs> or maybe smudge? <laughs> Sorry. Three more miles due east, Doc. Is that it? Drilling platform number six. They used to call it Old Faithful when it was pumping oil. Then it went drier than Danny's meatloaf. <laughs> so why start it up again after all these years? New owners. They think they can drill deeper and find more oil. 
I suspect the seabed below the rig has become too unstable for any new drilling. That's what the mayor wants us to find out. The town can't issue any new drilling permits until we know for sure. Getting a little choppy, guys. Hang on. Whirlpool, dead ahead! Turn, Heatwave! Quickly! <sighs> can't pull free! Too strong! Ah! <laughs> Mayday! SOS! Dad! Somebody! It's no use. There's no one around for miles. Uh, wrong. Insignia says Autobot, but I've never seen any bot that big. Oh, well, it looks like he means us no harm. So far. No oh my! Who is this guy? Hey, uh... Thanks for the save, but I got it from here. Let go! Hey, did you hear me? You gonna let us down or what? That bot's got some nerve. You and I are gonna have some words. High tide, my friend. Welcome to Earth. Opie, you old land yacht. How are you? Optimus. Thank you for answering my call. Good thing I did. I was having a gander at the local seabed when I caught their SOS. Found this wee rowboat circling the drain. Wait, you... you know this guy? This is High Tide, my old comrade in arms and the finest master seaman who ever lived. High Tide, meet rescue bot Heatwave. And these are some of the humans I was telling you about. Dr. Green and Frankie, Graham and Cody Burns. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for saving us. Huh. Now then, you wanted some words with me. Any in particular? Just, uh, well, thanks the rescue. Come, I want you to meet the rest of the team as well. <sighs> Rowboat. High Tide has come at my request for a purpose, to make our team seaworthy. Is this about the time I accidentally sank Heatwave? No, Blades. This is about getting some advanced training in seagoing rescue techniques. We've made plenty of water rescues. I know, but if that old oil rig is reactivated, we may need skills beyond even yours. That's why I've asked Optimus for help. It does seem prudent. If my suspicions are confirmed, any new drilling could potentially trigger an ecological calamity. That is why I called in an expert. The Chief has graciously agreed to go without your services during your training. We can use our old rides for a few days. During that time, High Tide will lead you. Follow his instructions and learn from him. Ooh, new honcho bot in town, big guy. Better watch your step. If Optimus says you're the real deal, that's good enough for me. Agreed. We will endeavor to make you proud. <laughs> we'll see. In truth, High Tide has much to learn from the team as well. Oh, the smoke alarm. Meatloaf must be done. Dinner! You too, Doc and Frankie. <laughs> 
Thanks. One last thing, High Tide. I recommend having a human guide to help you negotiate their world. Don't trouble yourself, Opie. Frankly, I find the species not worth bothering with. Humans may yet surprise you. I suggest Cody as your guide. He has experience orienting Autobots. Yeah, I suppose a small one can't be too much trouble. He's hardly a blip on my radar. Ten, hut! <laughs> Look at you scurvy wharf rats. Uh, Optimus didn't give me much to work with, did he? What are you supposed to be? Some oversized skeeter bot? Um, uh, actually, a helicopter, sir? It wasn't really my idea. You see, one day, just after we'd arrived on Earth... When I want your life story, I'll ask for it. Understand? Flyboy. Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. I mean... Uh, uh, uh. Ow. Servo! Whoa, Noble! Oil spill! Sir, as I'm sure you are aware, the Marine Code classifies oil as a hazardous material to be collected and disposed of responsibly. What? Hear that, Servo? Why, we're practically criminals. But he's sure enough right. Here, Swabby, start mopping. Um, uh, oh, you mean me? Uh, uh, to the best of my ability, sir. Swabby. Job one is to make you mangy lots seaworthy. Servo, some marine rescue gear for these sea slugs. <laughs> You're the handiest bot ever. Kinda cute, too. Big Red's already a fireboat. The Mosquito's got a rescue harness. So what to give you? Here. Uh, surfboard? Um, I've never really learned how. Well, then it's about time you did. Anyway, the board will do the surfing for you. Climb on! And for me, sir? You're doing a fine job, Shippy. Keep at it. Now, there's a throttle under your front toe. Ah! Yeah! Use your knees! Lean into it! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Go Boulder! I feel so light! <laughs> so free! Whoa! Whoa! So sinking! Boulder! Boulder! Rescue bots, roll to- Belay that! He's heading for a deep water trench! Way too risky for a crew of hatchlings. I don't even know why I bother swabbing the deck. All anyone does is drip on it. Sorry, sir. Guess I got kind of carried away. You sure did. Almost permanent like. At sea, there's no room for error. Yes, sir. It's okay, Boulder. I can't surf either. Now, me dainties, if we can get back to our drills. Try to get this right, Flyboy. Servo, victim mode. Don't approach into the sun. The glare off the water makes it too hard to see him. Swing that tail around. Hold your position steady. Now drop that line. Uh, Mr. High Tide, Blades actually does a lot better if you encourage him instead of yelling. Oh, do you think so, Blip? Well. I've been training bots for thousands of cycles. 
So I think I know how to train this one! Okay, calm, deep breaths, go to your happy place. Slow and easy. Yikes! Speed it up, you balmy bug! Ah! Whoa! Any chance he didn't notice that? <laughs> so, team, how'd your first day go? It wasn't my fault! That bad, huh? Well, you'll do better tomorrow. Whoa, what is that? His name is Servo. He appears to be a cross between a schnauzer and a toolbox. <laughs> Impressive. He belongs to High Tide. I just volunteered to buff out his dings after today's, um, incident. It wasn't my fault! The rig's in even worse shape than we thought. Rusted beams, missing struts, exposed wiring. That's not all. The cap on this well looks dangerously corroded. If it gets any worse, it could cause a huge oil spill. I'll file my report today. I'm recommending that site be off limits until the rig is repaired and that old cap replaced. I agree. I'll order a new one, then run some tests to find the best way to install it. Now, let's see if we can get through this drill in one piece. Servo will dive into the brine. Boulder, you'll surf in to scoop him up, then back to Heat Wave. Be wary of the waves. They'll pull you under and keep you there. Chase, keep an eye on Boulder. Blades, yeah. Blades, where in blazes is that lily-livered locust? Take it easy, Milo. We're gonna take you to the hospital. Um, Copterbot, return to base. Wait, you mangy moth! Get back here now! But, sir, a human needed help. Those weren't your orders. When you're under my command, you don't move till I say so. You're a washout mosquito, a waste of energon! And you're a big bully! Whoa. Oh dear. Uh oh. Blade spotted a real emergency, and he did exactly the right thing, because he cares about people. We're here to help, don't you get that? Ah, uh, you got gumption, Blip, I'll give you that. And I hate gumption! So stay out of things that aren't your concern, you hear me? We've all been hearing you, now you hear me. Cody's right. I'm only sorry I didn't say it first. There's no more loyal or helpful rescue bot than Blades, in this or any other galaxy. Heat wave. You mean that? Not now! I don't care how chummy you are with Optimus. Nobody talks to my team that way. Nobody. That's it, Bucko. Incompetence is one thing, but insubordination is another. Get off my ship! <sighs> Anybody else feeling expendable? Before I let Optimus know what a bunch of slimy scalapro you all are. I am unsure of the meaning, but I'm certain it was not complimentary. Sorry I let you down, Optimus. I know you wanted us to learn from him. High tide can be demanding, even harsh. But I asked him here for a reason. With all due respect, sir, he crossed a line. So maybe I should just sit this one out and let him teach the others. I would prefer you return. I don't believe either of you has finished learning from the other. But the decision must be yours. Hmm, as I feared. It's just peanut butter, Daddy. No, I mean these readings. I've been trying to determine the best way to install that new oil cap. But the situation is more critical than I thought. This entire area is far too unstable for future drilling. With any rig, one tremor could trigger a disaster.
Griffin Rock emergency. What? Right away. Cody, call High Tide. Tell him we need him and the bots. Now! I see them. Just barely. They're surrounded by burning oil. And that rig looks ready to fall over. Do your job, Mosquito. Yes, sir. No, Blades. We can't reach them. The fire's too high. We'll have to find another way. You, Red, out of my cabin. Or I'm going, you can't. But too dangerous. Now, scoot. What? What are we... Any luck? I tried to plug the leak. It couldn't be done. We await your order, sir. What now? Ah, your cockamamie planet and its flaming oceans. Look! Finally! Somebody who does know fire! <sighs> Vacation's over, hotshot. Time to get to work. Hey, I was waiting for you. End of the line code, too dangerous. I need some of that goo you used to soak up the oil. Oh, and, uh, permission to come aboard, sir. Granted. Chase, you and Servo load up his tanks with a dispersant. We need to put that new cap on the leak, but we have to get to it first. I'm going in for Doc and Frankie. Follow me on your board. Chase, you with us? I am not sure my mopping experience will prove useful, but I am most happy to help. Rescue bots, surf to the rescue! Ah! That's what I was thinking, Blip. You'll be a sailor yet. Mayor Lusky, and I'm afraid the site is too dangerous to consider any future drilling permits. I gotta admit, Opie, your bilge rats got the right stuff. Even the whirly bird found high gear. Sadly, that's the nicest thing he's ever said to me. Good work, Skeeter. Second nicest. <laughs> you have taught them, High Tide, but you have also learned from them. And that was your plan from the get-go, weren't it, you old skellywag? Well, you were right. Teaming up with the humans mm, might not be the worst idea ever. You all work well together, and it might be my management style could use a bit of finessing. I have one more request. Since Dr. Green's floating lab was lost in the fire, 
Would you be willing to remain on Earth for a time to take its place? Till I'm needed elsewhere, it'd be my pleasure. I'm off. Servo, stay here and watch over these lollygaggers. That's an order. Blip, uh, Cody, here's his whistle. Keep it for me, will you? Noble. 